بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. When the mission of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam started over 1400 years ago, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the age of 40, he sought solitude and went to go and reflect. At the top of the mountain of Nur, Jabal Nur, in the cave of Hira. And while he was there, he received divine revelation. And thus began his prophetic mission of changing the world. Reconnecting the creation to the creator. Giving people a sense of purpose in their lives. After the Prophet ﷺ came back home, he came back to Mecca with this message, with this mission, having literally absorbed the words of God into his heart, everything looked different. Everything was different. Nothing would ever be the same ever again. Not for him, and not for anyone else. Because the understanding was achieved at that moment that there is a profound truth and a reality behind the facade of the world. Everything we see, everything we touch, everything we interact with, there's a deeper meaning. And when the Prophet ﷺ was walking around in the streets of Mecca, looking at everything differently now. And his mind was racing and his heart was beating fast. And he was trying to wrap his head around the idea that, how do I proceed? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent upon him the second revelation that he received. And we know that revelation that Allah sent him as surah number 68. Surah Al-Qalam. In that surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying noon. The letter noon. It's like an, ex an expression of eloquence in the Arabic language. Noon. And God swore by the pen and the destiny of humanity and mankind. And then Allah said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِمَجْنُونَ By the blessing and the grace of your Lord, you have not lost your mind. The fact that you see and you understand that there's something deeper happening here, it's not because something's wrong with you. You haven't gone crazy, you haven't lost your mind. وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَأَجَرًا غَيْرَ مَمْنُونَ We're asking you, we're asking a lot of you. We're asking you to do something that is really challenging. But know that if you follow through, there's a huge reward that awaits you, that is never ending. And you are upon a very great and a very noble character. You are amazing in your character, in your demeanor, in how you deal with people, how you interact with people, how you treat people. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet ﷺ something. Something that nobody wants to hear, but it's the truth. He basically told him that, unfortunately, even though what you're saying is right, what you're doing is good, the way you're going to do it is going to be the best way that it could be done. In spite of all of that, there are going to be people who are going to oppose you. There are, there are going to be people who are going to choose to fight you, oppose you, and, and persecute you. And they're going to be very difficult to deal with. Allah said, فَسَتُبَصِرُوا وَيُبَصِرُونَ You very soon shall see how things unfold and they will also see how things unfold. 
بِأَيِّكُمُ الْمَفْتُونَ And soon we will realize who is right and who is wrong. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ ضَلَّ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ وَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِالْمُهْتَدِينَ Your Lord knows best who is more rightly guided and who is off the path and astray. So then Allah told the Prophet wasallam, and this is where I'd like to make the point in my talk here today. He said, فَلَا تُطِعِ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ So these people who deny the truth, don't listen to them. Do not give in to them the least bit. Do not waver in your morals, in your standards, in your ethics, in your beliefs, in your principles. Don't waver. Don't give in even an inch to these people who, are, who deny the truth. They want you to compromise your standards because they have already compromised their own standards. Here are the things you should look out for. Allah says, here are the things you need to look out for. Do not cooperate with people who are halaf. They take meaningless oaths. I swear this, I swear that. Their word has no weight. Maheen. People who are really despicable in their character. They have no dignity, they have no honor. Hammazin. People who go around picking on other people, they're bullies. Masha'im binamimin. They go around trying to cause trouble wherever they go. They're always trying to stir the pot. Manna'illil khayr. They're always, whenever something good is happening, they try to poke holes in it. They try to stop anything good from happening. All they do is hate. Mu'tadin. They don't know where the line is. They constantly cross the line with people. Athemin. They're very sinful people. All they want to do is engage in sin. Utullin, they are cruel hearted people. Cruel, just mean. Zanim. Not only that, but on top of everything else, you can never believe a word that comes out of their mouth. Everything they do is a lie. Everything they do is fake. And what makes them feel like it's okay to go around acting this way? What gave them the idea that it's okay to live your life this way? Why? Because they have a big family, because they have a lot of money, they live in a big house, they drive a fancy car, a lot of people know their name. So just because of their quote-unquote worldly success, they feel like they can go around acting this way. And when you give them the signs of God, when you read to them the Qur'an, they said, don't come here telling me old stories. They dismiss the truth as just being old stories. The point that I want to make here in this particular session is that after talking about being strange and dealing with these challenges of being different. And then talking about, you know, what is right and wrong and how to go about living our lives. The topic of my session is who am I? And it's a very important exercise for everyone to engage in when you ask yourself, who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Look in the mirror. And size yourself up. And take a very long, hard, honest look in the mirror. And ask yourself, who are you? And who you are is not just as simple as the address where you live. Who you are is not as simple as the, how much money you have in your bank account or what kind of a degree you have or what company you work at. That doesn't tell you anything about who you are. Here today, gone tomorrow. You live in this house today, you live in a different one tomorrow. 
You work at what company today, you work at another company tomorrow. I was talking to a friend of mine recently who worked for 15 years at a company at a very high executive level. And it was to the point where his identity was completely intertwined in, in, in working for that company. His identity was completely intertwined with that company and what, it's, what it does. That's how he was known as so-and-so who works over there, very big, su successful company. And just out of the blue, it was time to move on. And he's working for a completely different company now that does something totally different. And it actually struck him. He came to me at my office in between classes at the seminary at Qalam. He came and he sat down and he said, I'm literally having a, cri a crisis of identity. I don't know how I feel about all this. And as a friend, that's when I took the opportunity to say, well, maybe that was the problem. Your job should not define who you are. That's not who you are. So then what does define us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what defines us. God tells us what defines us. It is the content of your character. It is the principles that you abide by. It is what you believe in. It is what you stand for. So I'd like to lay out two profiles here today. I'd like to lay out two profiles that we get from the Quran and from the prophetic tradition, from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, from Islam, two profiles. And let's see which one, for it's something for each person to do on their own. Check which one do you measure up against? Which one more closely describes you? And only you can answer that question for yourself. So number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines and describes some people in the Qur'an in the following words. True believers are those people that when the name of God is mentioned, their hearts shake and tremble. And when the signs of God are presented to them, they grow in their faith and conviction. And they continue to put their faith and their trust in their Lord. They establish their prayer regularly. Just like we just heard, they spend in good causes that which God gave them. These are true believers. These are the people that God has reserved very high stations in paradise for them. And He will forgive them. And He will give them the best of things. Allah tells us that successful are the believers. Who are the believers? They have quality in their prayer. They enjoy talking to God in their prayer. When they realize that something is detrimental and not beneficial, they avoid it. They constantly strive to better and improve themselves. They are very cautious and very careful to not engage in any kind of extramarital, premarital, intimate relations. They don't engage in shamelessness and bad conduct and bad behavior. The only place where they exercise their sexual desires is inside the confines of a legitimate good marriage. And they do not cross the lines outside of that. They are the kind of people that when you trust them with something, they will never break your trust. When they give you their word, they make you a promise, they will always keep their promise to you. 
وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِذُونَ These are people who take care of their daily prayers, all the timings of the prayers. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ These are the people who will inherit the highest stages. الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسِ The gardens of paradise, جَنَّةُ الْفِرْدَوْسِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And they will be therein for all of eternity. Allah goes on to describe good people. وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا Good people are the kinds of people, people whom Allah loves. They are the people when they walk on the earth, they walk with humility. They're humble. وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا When ignorant people come and get in their faces, they say salam and they move on. They don't waste, they don't suffer fools. They don't waste their time with useless people. وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا They are people, they spend their whole nights worshipping and praying to their Lord. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا صْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمَ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غْرَامَ they ask God to protect them from the fire of hell. That's the worst place anyone could ever end up. People when they spend their money. They are not, they don't overspend. But they don't, they're not stingy either. They're not extravagant, nor are they stingy. Rather, they are very balanced in how they live in this world. They never associate partners with God. They do not violate the sanctity of life. They would never harm another person, let alone kill another person. And they never engage in sexual conduct outside the confines of marriage. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَ أَثَامًا يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدَ فِيهِ مُهَانًا These are the descriptions. People who pray, people who give charity, people who live life in a balanced way. They're humble, they're kind, they're generous, they have integrity, honesty, trustworthiness. These are good people. That is one profile of person. What is the second profile? Allah tells us, وَالْمُنَافِقَاتُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتُ بَعْدُهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدُ Hypocrites. What are they like? يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمُنْكَرِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَلِ الْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَقْبِدُونَ أَيْدِيَهُمْ They enjoin evil. They're always trying to get someone to do the wrong thing. When they see someone doing the right thing, they try to stop them. وَيَقْبِدُونَ أَيْدِيَهُمْ And they're very stingy. نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَنَسِيَهُمْ They forget God. So God will ignore them. Allah tells us, وَمَا مَنَعَهُمْ أَن تُقْبَلَ مِنْهُمْ نَفَقَاتُهُمْ إِلَّا أَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كُسَالَ When they do pray rarely and occasionally, they're very lazy and distracted in their prayer. يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَهُوَ خَادِعُهُمْ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ They constantly think that they are deceiving God. They're constantly trying to undermine other good people. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ Their hearts are diseased. فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا God increases them in their illness and in their disease. The Prophet ﷺ describes these people. He tells us, أَرْبَعٌ مَنْ كُنَّ فِيهِ كَانَ مُنَافِقًا خَالِصًا Four characteristics and qualities of bad people. Number one, woman can, uh, the Prophet says, Man kanat fihi khaslatum min hunna kanat fihi khaslatum min al nifaq hata yida'aha. If you have any one of these four qualities, then you have something problematic going on and you need to fix it. Number one, iza tumina khana. When that person is trusted with something, they break that trust. You tell them something and say, keep it to yourself, they tell somebody else. You give them something and you say, keep it safe for me, they don't do that. Number two, When they talk, they lie. Number three, When they give you their word, they always break their word. When they disagree with someone, they become very rude and very vile and disrespectful. They don't know how to disagree. 
And the Prophet ﷺ tells us that these are the characteristics and the qualities of bad people. So now, and remember those characteristics that I presented in the beginning. Lying, cheating, slandering, criticizing, bullying. These are two profiles, two kinds of people. You want to answer the question, who am I, who are you? That's how you go about answering that question. Am I more like person A or am I more like person B? Do I, am I closer to the first profile or am I tragically closer to the second profile? And I'll end and conclude by mentioning who the Prophet ﷺ was. Who was the Prophet ﷺ? Allah tells us what he was like. Who was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Allah tells us in Surah number 9, Ayah number 128. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ There came to you a messenger from amongst you. عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ Your suffering was hard on him. He felt your pain. He cared so much about other people that he would feel their pain. Harisun alaykum. He always wanted what was good for other people. He wanted what was good for you. He wouldn't think of himself first. He would think of everyone else first. Bil mu'minina ra'ufun rahimun. With the believers, with his followers, in his community, he was very merciful and extremely, extremely compassionate. That's who the Prophet ﷺ was. It's not an easy thing to do. It's in fact probably the hardest thing to do. To be honest with yourself. To look in the mirror and really ask yourself, Who am I? Am I more like this person or am I more like that person? It's a really, really hard, sobering moment. And it's probably going to upset you profoundly when you finally do get around to doing it. But know that it's probably going to be one of the most important moments in your life when you're finally able to do it. And hopefully that's sooner rather than later. That's the moment that your life changes. That's the moment when you realize I could be doing so much better. My life could be so much more meaningful. I could literally change the world. Forget about changing even just myself. I could change myself and the whole world. But it all begins with that question of who am I? And being willing to look yourself in the mirror and size yourself up and check yourself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to live, of, live a life of honesty. Say I mean. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to live a life of dignity. May God give us the ability to live with meaning and purpose. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be the best version of ourselves that we can be. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.